If you're a bit observant, you've probably noticed something curious about the evolution of fighter jets, and that is that they have essentially become slower after reaching a peak speed around the 60s and 70s. For example, a MiG-25 from the 70s could fly much faster than a current Su-57. The MiG-25 had a maximum operational speed of Mach 2.8. In contrast, the current Su-57 have a maximum speed of just Mach 2. The case of the United States is much more notable. For example, an F-4 Phantom II from the 60s has a maximum speed widely superior to the current F-35 Lightning. The F-4 Phantom had a speed of Mach 2.2 while the F-35 Lightning barely reached Mach 1.6. Why does this happen? You might be thinking that is because there haven't been many advances in engine technology, but it really doesn't have much to do with technological progress but rather it's a matter of optimization. Since the airplane emerged for military use in the First World War, the focus of technological advancement in military aviation was to make planes faster. The fastest planes had the ability to enter enemy territory, perform their function and get out of there in less time. In addition, when air-to-air -air combat emerged, being faster allowed you to reach your enemies and escape from them in less time. Therefore, the fastest planes were more lethal and had a higher survival rate. For several decades, engines became larger and more efficient, making planes faster. For example, by the end of World War I, planes had a maximum speed of around 200 km per hour. In contrast, by the end of World War II, propeller-driven planes could even reach speeds close to 765 km per hour. But these engines had a limit. Piston-based engines were quite limited, as they essentially were not much different from a car engine. To give you an idea of the importance of speed in military aviation, in 1942, the Royal Air Force put into service the Halliband DH-98 Mosquito, a plane that curiously had a wooden fuselage, hence it was nicknamed the Wooden Wonder. At first it was thought of as a bomber, but it was so effective that it began to fill many other roles such as transport or reconnaissance. In its first two years of service in World War II, it roamed the enemy skies as if nothing, since the Luftwaffe did not have a plane fast enough to intercept it. It was so fast that it had no weapon to defend itself from fighters, as simply none could reach it. It wasn't until the Messe mit May 262 emerged that the Germans were finally able to hunt down these planes. Unfortunately, the Messemich 262s would not save Germany, but they would save the military aviation of the winning countries. With the Mi-262, the piston barrier was broken, and suddenly a new way to make planes faster emerged. At first, jet engines were not very efficient, but different types of jet engines emerged that would fill many roles, making them much more useful than ever before. By the early 50s, the MiG-17 fighters could already reach Mach 0.9 and by the early 60s, fighters like the F-4 Phantom could fly at speeds close to Mach 2.3. Until the 50s, it was not uncommon for military aircraft to fly at their maximum operational speed for the reasons previously mentioned, but suddenly in the 60s, the planes became so fast that they almost never flew at their maximum speed. In Vietnam, a study by the United States Navy revealed that American fighters that were capable of exceeding Mach 2, such as the F-4 Phantom, never actually flew at speeds close to the aforementioned. In fact, among the total flight time of all fighter incursions into enemy territory, they only flew for a few seconds at Mach 1.4 and for a few hours at just over Mach 1.2. For this report, all documented fighter incursions into enemy territory during the 20 years of the conflict were studied. So despite having fighters that could exceed Mach 2, the pilots simply never reached those speeds. Also, the F-15 Eagles, which interestingly were created in response to the MiG-25 fighter that could reach Mach 2.28, had the ability to reach Mach 2.5, but the usage records of these planes show that the F-15s rarely exceeded Mach 2 in the combats they participated in and that were documented. Taking into account the study done in Vietnam since it was done in really intense combat situations, why did the pilots never exceed Mach 1.2? The problem was not the enemy cases, since during the conflict in Vietnam, the MiG-19 and MiG-21 were in service and were capable of exceeding Mach 1.3 and Mach 2, respectively. There are really many factors that prevented pilots in Vietnam from flying their homes at maximum speed. 
First, we must consider that supersonic fighters, due to their afterburners, have their cruising speed, which is generally above and close to half of their maximum speed. On the other hand, subsonic fighters usually have their cruising speed close to their maximum speed, so supersonic fighters to go at cruising speed always go at a very moderate speed, a little far from their maximum speed. Given that most of the time these fighters are at a speed far from their maximum speed, Supersonic speed would allow you to reach the target faster, but with a disadvantage, it consumes a lot of fuel. And this is a problem because it limits the range of action. The range of action is the maximum distance that a plane can reach to attack a target, taking into account that it can return to its base again. A fighter that flies Mach 9 consumes less fuel than one that flies Mach 1.2. Therefore, the first fighter has a greater range of action because it has more fuel to spend because it saves more fuel. Also, when fighting, flying at supersonic speeds also causes many problems. For instance, maneuverability. The turning speed is greatly affected by high speeds. The turning speed is the time it takes to turn your plane around. The slower, the less time it will take for your plane to turn. For this reason, pilots in air-to-air -air combat generally maintain speeds that allow them to have a higher turning speed. Maneuvering at supersonic speeds, as subsonic planes do, is impossible, not only due to mechanical limitations, but rather due to the human factor, to the forces to which the crew would be subjected. After the 70s, more emphasis began to be placed on the creation of multi-role houses, instead of making purely interceptor houses. Today, pure interceptors are very rare, with multi-role fighters predominating. Designing fighters to fly at high speeds was quite complicated. For example, afterburners caused fighters to have a higher temperature at high speeds, making them much more visible in infrared, so to make stealth houses, the speed of the planes had to be reduced to make them more invisible. For example, stealth planes like the F-117 Nighthawk, its maximum operational speed is Mach 0.9 being a subsonic plane. Basically for this reason modern fighters are slower than before. Faster engines are more complicated engines. In order to make fighters more stealthy and quiet, that carried more missiles, that had a greater range and were more maneuverable, fighters were designed to be slower. After all, pilots almost never flew at high speeds above Mach 2, so flying at speeds greater than Mach 2 was something they could do without. 